got, what I've got here is that Osage flat bow that I've been working on. I've got it in the vise. On this occasion, I'm using a vise because I'm going into final tiller. Uh, up until now, I've been into pre-tiller. I'm just, I'm just panning the whole bow itself. So you can see pretty good. There's a handle. Got it anchored right there in that vise so I can pull some wood right right where the camera eye is looking right now I gotta pull a lot of wood off that all the way down this limb you know to a degree and then up here at the tip from from just beyond the tip right in there I gotta take quite a bit of wood off right in this area so but down here down in this area where my finger is you, you don't want to mess with that so it's already got enough wood off of it, but I'm going to try and capture it as I pull wood off of it and tiller it and go from the tillering string to the, you know, vise and start pulling wood off. We'll see what happens. Y'all just follow along. Start here in just a sec. Seeing me pulling wood off with a draw knife, you know, attached to, you know, the vise, i got to find out how much wood actually came off and... I need to find out um, how well it bends, you know, right on that limb now, as opposed to the way it bent before, because before you could see that particular right-hand limb, you know, facing it, right-hand limb was stiff. It wasn't bending very much, so I, you can see that I was taking wood off the entire length of the limb. Instead of this limb now, on the other hand, I still got my marks that this limb only needs to be pulled down from here up this part right here is what's holding up everything down here is starting to bend pretty nicely and everything from here up is is not wanting to bend very well so that's what I'm trying to determine and uh, I, I just keep going back and forth it's kind of hard I got to reset up each time but uh, I got to go to the tiller and string now and you're gonna see the tiller and string the way I set it up it's a it's a good homemade setup for tiller and, uh, you know self bows or handmade bows that is anyway there's my tillering stand tillering bench if you want to call it that see the bow really doesn't have it it's not braced I mean it, it's got a string and stretch pretty tight now that string is tight I'll, I'll go ahead and show you by my finger see when I touch it it's it's pretty tight it's not braced you know the limb is not bent from it but it's almost wanting to bend so that's that's the position you want your bow when you're getting ready to pull the string now you can see i got a a carabiner hooked onto the string a loop there going down to the floor which you can see i've got a pulley see that pulley pull it just a little bit you can see the uh sawdust it's down in there but anyway that's the pulley for drawing bow and then what I'll do is I get back here go back up and pan and let you see when I pull string that that limb's bending like that. That limb's bending. That that limb's bending better than it was. But I can see that I need to bend, you know, out on the tip, out on the two thirds out from the tip, two thirds back in. Needs to be pulled. And on this one, uh, yeah, out on the tip needs to be pulled. So I'm back off the tiller and stick, and I'm pulling wood. Don't really need any wood pull off here. You can see I'm really not pulling wood. All I'm doing is smoothing this rough stuff off, just cleaning it up. A lot of times you just want to keep your wood nice and smooth and clean, you know, even though you're not really needing to pull any wood off right there. You want to get those grind marks out from the file and clean it up, you know, keep it that way. This area right here, though, doesn't need any wood being pulled off. Uh, Sorry, the camera can't see me. It's just the way it's got to be. So I'm pulling wood from right here all the way down. You can see where the bow, the bow kind of dips up like that. You can see that it's likely to bend very well right there.
after having been a bowyer for better than 20 years and building lots of them, what I just did could take you right to the break point and ruin your boat. All of a sudden, you're you're working on a very nice piece of work. Next thing you know, you got a little kid's bow in your hand. All you can do is shoot uh, sparrows with it because that's all the power you're going to get out of it. So remi remember, the further when you first start, you got a big piece of wood and you're grinding, you're pulling off with a draw knife. Can't very very large margin of error for making mistakes. Very uh, uh, what you call uh, forgiving. Uh, you, you know, you gouge into your wood with your draw knife. It's no big deal because you got so much wood on the stave that it doesn't matter at that point. But when you get to this point, every little fraction of wood you take off can change the dynamic of that bow. And I mean, it gets very, very technical down here to the roughed out. From, from where you're roughed out, it, you can make more mistakes, gouge out a little more wood than you wanted to, but you know, it happens. Yeah, it's just where the draw knife runs sometimes. It's where the grain runs is what it is, and the draw knife hits it, hit a knot, it pulls it down deep, and the next thing you know, you got a big chunk of wood you pulled out. Might not have wanted to do that, even though you got enough wood on it to to get by. You do that sort of thing when you're down to this point, shoot, you're done. Might as well just make firewood out of it, because that's all it is. Anyway, so I've just pulled some off that. I'm going to put the string back on it and uh, try it again. So, be back. This is what I've been working on. This is what you've been seeing me work on. And I'm getting the limbs down to where they're bending nicely. In fact, I think what I'm going to do right now, before the battery dies, I'm afraid it might die in the middle of what I'm doing. But, I'm going to go ahead and tighten the string up. I'm going to string it. I'm going to string it not tight, but I am. I'm going to string this bow right now. Maybe not brace it all the way. I'm gonna brace this bow right now. Tell me a lot about it. Just brace it. Nope, it's not enough. Tight. Sucker's tight, man. The string is tight. Twisted tight. Now I suppose. Not brace yet. Okay. Now this bow is braced. Now that's that's what I call a full brace. That bow is full brace and I need a little bit of wood right here. Just a little bit, actually, pretty close. put a handle on it then I'll put some kind of a fine finish on it I don't know what I don't I don't use polyurethanes or anything like this I use natural light oil and stuff like that heck just uh, pure motor oil would be good if you did it over and over and over you know very thin coat so and I mean not dunk, you would dunk it in motor oil but just on this side not on not on the uh, snakeskin side on the snakeskin side you want to put something that will put a 
uh, you don't want to make it brittle. If you use polyurethane, that can make it brittle. So you want to put something on there that'll coat it and seal it, but not, you don't want it brittle. Because, you know, it's bending, it's working. It's actually, when you bend it, you know, the, the snake skin bends and stretches a little bit too. So Anyway, there you have it. It's pretty much the sum total of tilling out a bow. Got to put a nice leather, I'll put a nice leather handle on it. What's cool about a self bow is that you can actually decide which side you like top and which side you like bottom. It doesn't matter. You can shoot it either way. Right hand, left hand, top or bottom. You know, anyway. There it is. Fine looking piece. Very, very proud of this piece. Snake skin all the way. Eastern Diamondback Rattler. And uh, just stay tuned. I'll see you in a little bit.